Hey guys, how y'all doing, man? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all those around the world. Welcome back to another Pokemon Unite tier list featuring Dorelodon, featuring Gengar. This new patch, this new buffs, these new nerfs. There's a lot of things that have been changed over the weekend with the new Dorelodon nerf and everything. There's a lot of things that have been changing in the metagame with all these tournaments that we've been playing throughout the qualifiers and stuff, the monthly finals and all that sort of thing. Different teams are running different Pokemon. There's a lot of ins and outs to the metagame in which a lot of people don't realize. For those of you who aren't up into the tournament side of Pokemon Unite, who aren't really watching competitive play, this may be a little bit of insight to how you perform in the future or how you perform now in your games. But either way, let's dive into it. We're going to make this off real, real simple for a lot of people because there's a lot of Pokemon here. It's so a little time. So let's do this. First of all, we're going to toss up and greet it up here to the S tier. I know this may surprise a lot of people, but again, my thoughts, my opinions, right? Greet it right now is one of the best Pokemon in the entire game, hands down. You can argue with that fact if you want to, but just like Lucario, this Pokemon deserves this spot. Like, he deserves where he is. He is a defender-style Pokemon, right? But he doesn't do exactly what you think he, he does. He's supposed to. You know what I mean? Greedent has that ability to be wherever, whenever, around the map. He can go ahead and score plentiful. He can get people to chase him, which that happens every single game. Even in competitive play, even in solo queue, it doesn't matter. Someone's going to chase this Pokemon and he's going to create value. He's going to create pressure no matter where he's at on the map. I think Greedent does that quite well opposed to some of these other Pokemon here. We're going to go ahead, put your boy Lucario in top side in the S rank. And there's not really much else we got to talk about. He got nerfed, but he's still super viable. He's still super strong. He's the only Pokemon that generally speaking goes up in that top lane for that 1v1 in competitive play and that 1-1-3 one, one, meta. Even in solo queue, he's generally top side. In that one v one situation. If not, you might fight some other Pokemon like Machamp up there, give or take. But generally, it's Lucario. For good reason. Sadly enough, okay? I mean, I think they need to do a little bit more with this Pokemon, but he's pretty much in every single tournament game, every single stack, every single competitive uh, competitive match. It's, it's to that point, right? But why is he used so much? Honestly, I mean, come on. If you guys haven't figured it out yet, people at the office play Lucario. Let's, let's be fair. This is why this Pokemon has not fallen off the face of the earth in this game yet. They can't nerf him too hard. That's just, that's just what I think, dude. I could be wrong. Who knows? We might be seeing another nerf here soon. We'll get to it. We'll figure it out. We're going to drop down your boy Aegislash down here in the D tier. This tier list has no rhyme or reason. I'm just going Pokemon off the Pokemon to Pokemon. Now, being an all-rounder, Aegislash comes into the game with a decent amount of stats, right? Defensive, offensive. He does it well, but at the same time, you don't see Aegislash played in competitive play you don't see him picked up in competitive qualifiers and championships you, you don't you don't really see him played it's not that he's a bad pokemon it's that there's other pokemon that you can utilize more often or and better than aegislash and he does have a very high skill ceiling to play he's not a pick up and play pokemon he's not a gengar you know what i mean gengar is not a pick up and play aegislash not a pick up and play there's a lot of pokemon in in this game right now who do a lot just other pokemon can be more effective you know what i'm saying not, not that he's bad. It's just, eh, it's a hard spot for a lot of people. I think Serena's also going to be down here in this D tier. Serena got a buff to stop, and I hate to put her here because I like playing the Pokemon. I think she's really, really solid, but there's other Pokemon that do it better. You know what I mean? And she's she has that spot in which if you try to place her on a competitive team, there's other Pokemon that can do her job better, right? To be honest, she got a buff to stop and does decent, decent damage, but you're still not going to see her as often if any on competitive uh competitive matches right now solo queue you might run into it because it's solo queue solo queue is pretty much just whatever right because you're playing solo queue there's no rhyme or reason people are going to play all dps in the same team you know it's it is what it is but do i still think she's going to be right here yes yes i do we're going to toss up charizard in the a tier now for those of you who don't know i've always told you that charizard is a really really good pokemon he is a counter to many. He is a counter to many Pokemon. And even over the weekend, we had a we had a championship team. We had a team actually win North America qualifiers, per se. And they were also running Charizard. It's weird because at the end of the day, it's just like this Pokemon is always going to be viable. He's always going to be good unless they nerf him to the ground, you know? But when you're playing Charizard in your teams, what do you, what, what do you have that a lot of other Pokemon don't? Pressure. What do you have that... You can cancel out everything else in the game, essentially. You have your Unite move. You scoop up whoever you want to scoop up. 
and their immediate response generally is to die or go defensive. Charizard brings that pressure no matter what. Because every single team fight, every composition, every fight you do is after the or whatever. If you have your Unite move, you know what I mean? If you're Charizard and they don't know or they don't know if you actually pop your Unite move just yet, even if they're paying attention to it, you always have that pressure. And I think Charizard has that going for him. But there's other Pokemon that do his job too. Just as good, if not better. You know, that's why they're in S-Rank. But maybe Charizard will get up there to a certain degree in S-Rank when other Pokemon get nerfed. You know what I'm saying? But hey, we'll see. We'll get into it. Krussel? Uh, I, I hate to see it, right? We all hate to see it. Krussel is meh. He's going to be a D-tier Pokemon for me and a lot of other people out there, a lot of other, you know, average shows, content creators. I think he's just not great. Now, he's good in one composition, which is score composition. You know, like with Krussel, you got Dragonite, you got Talonflame can be in there as well. He's very good at scoring, but that's it. You know, because as a defender, other defenders do his job a lot better, i.e. Greedent. You know, a lot of other Pokemon we're going to talk about on this tier list, some supports. It's just, he's not, he's not there. For a lot of people you don't see him actually be run on a lot of competitive teams just unless it's in a score composition that's pretty much it mr mime also a d-tier pokemon i hate to put it like this but mimey got nerfed right they nerfed the confusion for whatever reason they wanted us to start playing with psychic why i couldn't tell you i think they literally just just pretty much put the nail in a coffin for this pokemon right now mime is was pretty good, right? But nobody was actually generally like running Mr. Mime a lot. So it's not like they had to nerf Confusion. I think they hit this Pokemon for no reason, to be honest with you, for Confusion nerf. That makes no sense. So now we're forced to either take, you know, Psychic and Guard Swap, which you should be running Guard Swap anyway, but running Psychic. Psychic is very lackluster opposed to Confusion, but Confusion just got nerfed. So Mr. Mime is in a very, very weird position right now. For whatever reason, they decided to do this. We got Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff teeters the A and the S tier for me. All right? She's going to be A because I cannot place her up here just yet because there are other Pokemon that do something in which Wigglytuff can be countered a little bit. Just a little bit. But at the same time, she brings so much to the team in forms of utility, tankiness, and crowd control. She has so much stuff going on for her. Whereas some of these other pink Pokemon do as well, and they bring a lot of different competitive, I guess, elements to your team. Whereas Blissey here, for instance, is going to be an A-tier Pokemon as well. Or for her what ability? If she can give everybody helping hands, she gives everybody her crowd control immunity, you know what I'm saying? Whereas in a bot lane, in a 1-1-3, she is super, super good. Being able to give Dorelodon unstoppable is Fantastic, right? Because they, they can't lock him down. They can't be crowd controlled. She just brings so much in that aspect in a 1 1 3 situation. Whereas if you're running Blissey into a Wigglytuff, you can give your team unstoppable as well into Sing. Blissey does a lot of work. And I think these two counteract one each other. But at the same time, if you have if you have a Blissey and the enemy team has like an Eldegoss, for instance, or they're running a, um, what do you call it? If you're running a Wigglytuff and they're running an Eldegoss, for instance, you do have, I guess how you would say, more more engaged, if that makes sense, because you have that sing, you have the back out situation. If you want to walk out, give people unstoppable with uh, Bliss Blissey, you have a lot of uh, abilities, with both these Pokemon. And I think it's very, very hard to just toss everybody up in the S rank, even though they are S rank quality. All depends on your team composition. And then you got your boy Slowbro. Hands down, S rank Pokemon. Y'all should already know this. Everybody and their brother back in the day was playing Slowbro, right? But they were playing what? Skull. We were, we were doing damage. We were doing DPS. Why? Why though? Because just like every other defender Pokemon out there, you wanna you wanna do damage. It doesn't make any sense. In the solo key world, everybody plays the DPS. Nobody legitimately just like, hey, I'm a support main. Hey, I'm a defender main in solo queue. It doesn't happen. Let's be honest. You may get that one player in which actually plays a defender Pokemon in one of your games, and you're just like, oh yes, we, we might win. And then you may go ten games after that, and everyone wants to play DPS. And Slowbro included, because people play him Skull for some reason. But when you're going full tank, this Pokemon does it all. He does everything you could possibly want. You take that Surf. You have his Unite move that can stop any Pokemon in the entire game. You literally just remove them from playing. They might as well just put their controller down, because they can't do anything else. 
and in a competitive situation where you're playing in a stack, you're sitting here, you're talking in Discord or what have you, bruh, you press the Unite move on the target. You guys, I got him. Kill him. Easy. You move on. Slowbro has that Surf Plus, which when you upgrade Surf, what happens? We all know we can't play the game when we walk into a Surf. It, that, that's what he does. He does it very, very well. And being in that bot lane for that three stack, he's pretty much unkillable half of the time if you if you play it right. And he has that potential to Surf. You know what I mean? He does really, really well for his defender role. Opposed to some of the other defenders like Snorlax, for instance, who kind of fell off a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, I'm going to probably put him in either B or C tier. For me personally, I think right now he's going to probably be a C tier Pokemon. Just like your boy, uh, just like your boy Memoswine. But for Blastoise, for instance, considering Blastoise did get his buff, we have to, yeah, I think, I think he's going to see a little bit more play. Just not to the level of like, Slow bro, not to the level of like wiggly stuff, you know, because he takes a spot in that team composition. You know what I mean? But he does do a little bit more damage. But as a defender style Pokemon, you need to be there doing what? Defending. And for his crowd control, you take Surf, but his Surf isn't as good as Slow Bros. So, I mean, it's a toss up. But I think he's in a better position than Snorlax as well, because he does do damage. He does get that unstoppable. He's not just a per se a wall in which you can avoid being, you know, Snorlax. Because a lot of Pokemon also get unstoppable, so Snorlax trying to wall you off doesn't really... It's not that effective in that situation, especially when some Pokemon can actually do a lot of damage to tanks. You know what I mean? But, you know, each their own. You got Memoswine and the C-tier. I hate to do it like that. A lot of teams have tried, been running, have tried to run Memoswine inside the... What do we call it? The tournaments and stuff, the qualifiers. A lot of teams have tried running this Pokemon. He does okay, but at the same time, in that bottom lane, you're you're a melee Pokemon trying to get pressure, right? Trying to get your other DPS Pokemon leveled up, your IE, your Venusaur, IE, your Duraludon, or whoever your DPS is in that bot lane. He does an okay job. He just doesn't do as good as some of the other defenders and or supports that you could place. You know what I mean? You got Absol, straight up in D tier. I, it, he's, I'm sorry guys. Absol fans out there, I apologize. It is what it is. You see Absol played? How much? That's what I thought. Not very much at all. In solo queue, yeah, sure, run into a game of Absol. No problem. In a competitive stack, it's just not viable. It's really just not viable. And I hate to be like that because he is a very cool Pokemon. He's very fun to play. But when you're sitting here, you're trying to fight at Zapdos, you're trying to fight in these choke points. A lot of a lot of players, they just don't got it. You know, they're, they're built different. Like, like, literally, they're just... They're not that great. And it, it is what it is. It's not the call out Absol being horrible. I think it's just the, the, the micro and the macro is, is different when it comes to Pokemon like Absol, Gengar, some of the other speedsters. Whereas I want him to work competitively, but I just don't think Absol is there yet. I just don't do it. And you have Zero Aura as well. And for those of you who don't understand why, for example, Zero Aura has a passive ability called Voltasorb where she does more damage depending on how much damage you do to him up to a cap. Sounds great, right? A lot of people don't even understand his passive ability. They have no idea. But on top of that, he has this other ability called his Unite move, which has pretty much been gutted into the ground. And he gets his Unite move at level 10. So what does that mean? Generally, Dreadnought is spawning when you're, give or take, level 7, level 8, sometimes level 9 when you're ahead. But even... When you're level 9, you still don't have your Unite move. And if an enemy team knows this, you know, playing into a Zero Aura, they're going to try to punish you a lot more. And in a competitive situation, you're playing against a stack. That stack is probably going to do what? They're going to punish you guys because you guys have a Zero Aura. You're not ready for this Dreadnought fight. They either have a Cinderace or a Venusaur, and they're about to, they're about to teeter to get their Unite move. And you don't have a Unite being Zero Aura until you hit level 10. So you, don't, you lose a lot of pressure trying to fight off for that Dreadnought. And a lot of people probably don't realize that right away. But at the same time, those that do, that's why they're not running Zero or competitive. You know what I mean? And solo queue, you might see him. But this is solo queue. Completely different. You got Dorelodon here. And which we'll get to. Well, we will get to him. We're going to take up Talonflame up in the A tier. Because this Pokemon overall is just... He's just busted. Like, he is busted. In the right hands. Because not everyone's going to pick up and play and be able to be super good with this Pokemon. But his secure... Is super solid. His mobility is super solid. 
he can also be run into a, uh, a score comp, you know, Crustle, what have you, Dragonite. Now, when it comes to the jungle, I think he is one of the better jungle Pokemon in the game right now. Hands down, up there with Greninja, up there with Gengar. Yeah, I say it, Gengar, I'm biased, it is what it is. Now, in the right light, Talonflame is absolutely disgusting because everybody hates to see it. We get Dreadnought down super low, we get Zapdos super low. Talonflame comes out of nowhere, Brave Bird. It's just immediate impact, and he steals it. I mean, it feels bad, but it's something you have to deal with. Every single game you run into an enemy Talonflame player, you have to be ready for it. And not a lot of teams are competitively. I mean, when you guys sat down and watching all these the tournament plays and stuff, some teams are running this Pokemon. And at the end of the day, even in solo queue, when you run into this Pokemon, that's a fact that you have to deal with every game you run into a Talonflame. His Unite moves up pretty much all the time. He's got Brave Bird and or Fly. He's ready to steal these objectives. Just be weary for it. If you're a good Talonflame player, we all know you can teeter up in that S rank. We all know you how good you can be in a team. Now, when it comes to some of these other type Pokemon in here, I wish they did as much as Talonflame. Well, you know, that's, this is why every Pokemon has that role. You know what I mean? We got Garchomp in the C tier. He did get buffed, but he's still not there yet. Competitive-wise, he's still not there yet. I'm not saying he's bad because I love playing the Pokemon, but I'm not very I'm not necessarily as good with Garchomp as I am with other types. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and spend my time playing a Pokemon in which I don't think is competitively viable. You know what I mean? Because in any light right now, Decidueye, Cinderace, Duraludon, Greninja, all these other Pokemon are super, super strong, right? They're very good at what? At range. You're sitting here, you're playing Garchomp into this is not 9 out of 10 a good idea. You know what I mean? They got a red buff. You don't have a red buff. You're melee. They're ranged. What are you supposed to do? You're going to get kited. And that's the way it feels when you're playing with Garchomp. 9 out of 10 in a situation because you're going to run into all those other Pokemon pretty much every game. And he doesn't bring any viability to your team. There's no reason to lock in a Garchomp versus locking in the Venusaur. You know what I mean? But hey, eats their own, right? We're going to throw a Pikachu up here to the A tier. Yeah. Uh, you should saw that coming. Pikachu brings everything to the table in that stack in that three in the bot lane. Everything. Crowd control, damage, range. He has everything. Secure. He can also secure objectives. In case y'all don't know that. Electro Ball. Plain and simple. Easy. Easy snipes, right? Electro Ball does more damage to what? Lower health targets. Easy. You know what I mean? Pikachu also has a Unite move, which charges relatively quickly. And he's giving Buddy Barrier to everybody. Because I'm assuming if you're a competent person, you're running Buddy Barrier on Pikachu. You know, that's just me. Not shots fired to anybody. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got Hoopa. God type Pokemon is up in the S rank. For good reason. Now I want to see more teams actually utilize um hyperspace. We sat here, we watched over the tournaments. You know, some people are running Hoopa and stuff, but a lot of them are running Trick. Which, if you don't know, day one Hoopa came out, I said Trick was gonna be the busted ability. Day one. And that thing got nerfed. Quite hard. It did. It, it got nerfed. But at the same time, Trick was being overshadowed by Hyperspace Hole. Or however you say that ability. Yeah, Hyperspace, Hyperlink, whatever it is. The Teleporter. It got overshadowed by that, right? Because people were just running that. But then people actually caught on to realize how good Trick actually was. Trick is still busted. It's still very solid. It's still a very, 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 very good ability. It gives your ally Pokemon movement speed. It gives you movement speed. It gives them lifesteal once you level it up. It gives them so much. It gives them a shield. There's a lot of stuff that Trick does. And if you're running, I know, hear me out. This is me. I'm going to big ad get for this item. If you're running Amplifier, if you're running Shell Belt, you can have Trick up more often on top of your Shadow Balls. Because your goal with Trick is not to actually just be the top damage dealer. It's the fact that you can just stun and stun and stun with the cooldown reduction. It does ridiculous numbers, but you have to be relatively good with Hoopa to actually perform well. And in a competitive situation, if you're running Hoopa, you already bring that to the team. You bring a whole different element to the game. You change the game just by playing Hoopa because you have Trick, you have Hyperspace. Hoopa right now has changed the game overall on how you perform in Pokemon Unite. You bring something completely different to the table that no other Pokemon does. And I think he deserves this s rank tier, this s rank spot. And I think you guys would agree with it either way. Hoopa is here to stay in this game until they actually they nerf him even harder or we get somebody else that can do what he does, if not better or more. You know what I mean? We're going to see him a lot. And I hate to be like that, but we are. I'm sorry if you're tired of him.
<laughs> He's here to stay. We're gonna take nine tails up here in A rank. I know, right? Nine tails moves up from D, moves up from C, moves up from those ranks in which we see every other tier list. She's definitely gonna be an A tier, hands down, no problem, because she brings so much crowd control to the game. She has her aura veil, which gives her mobility now. Even though they nerfed the damage a little bit, that doesn't matter. Who cares? Now, at the end of the day, your nine tails, you weren't actually there to do the most damage every single game. You weren't you weren't taking that DPS spot from somebody else. You know what I mean? Because in competitive play, you don't see nine tails, right? But now with this buff, you're gonna see teams run this Pokemon in that one one three meta in the bot lane. She's actually actually very toxic to play against, especially when you're running nine tails, you're running the wiggly tough, and then you have I eat another one of your, you know, your picks down there in the bot side. She brings so much crowd control. You got Wigglytuff Sync. You have Nine Tails crowd control with with freezes. It's very hard to deal with for people who aren't ready. And I think once other teams realize this, and some have already, we're gonna see it a lot more. I think Nine Tails is in a very very solid situation right now. She also has the highest special attack in the game. So regardless if she got nerfed, it doesn't necessarily matter. She will do damage. But hey. That's my opinion. You know, everyone's going to be a little bit different. We're, we're going to get to it. We're going to check it out. We're going to bring up Eldegoss to an A rank. Yes, Eldegoss is very, very good. She can teeter S rank just like Wigglytuff and Blissey, right? But there are other competitive Pokemon and, and in solo queue that do her job, if not better. Because you have to compete with Wigglytuff. You got to compete with Blissey and Slowbro now. But I think she has a harder time being able to do that when there's so many other spots that are open because you can't sit and stack your team with supports. You know what I mean? Especially when you also have Hoopa there. So you got to consider Hoopa. You got to consider so many different options for Eldegoss. But when she is in your team, she brings the shield. She brings the healing. That's her job. And that's it, to be honest with you. She's not necessarily up in the fight, taking damage like Blissey and Wigglytuff. She's not doing that per se. But... She does bring her own choice of playstyle to the teams. You got your boy Venusaur. We're going to put him in A rank. I know he's not S rank anymore. He's not S rank. And here's why. Dorelodon is in this game. That is legit why. And the only reason this Pokemon is not in S rank. Because you have to compete with other types of Pokemon in that role. So for instance, when you're in that bot side and you're trying to feed experience to your Venusaur... Relodon has a better chance of just sniping that experience, has a better chance of just getting experience safely opposed to Venusaur. Now, even though Dorelodon got nerfed, he is still in every single game in competitive. He's in every game that you typically run into in solo queue. He's one of the highest pick rates in the game right now. For good reason. He does a lot, right? But still, when it comes to him and Venusaur, he has that better option. He has that safer role by playing Dorelodon into the Venusaur, if that makes sense. It's easier to feed him farm. Now, speaking of Dorelodon, I'm going to put him in S rank, and that should have been no, you know, no contest. You know, if, between S rank and A rank is where Dorelodon is going to be, because I can't just stack everybody up in S rank, but I can stack certain Pokemon in which we all know are actually relatively very, very solid. And Dorelodon being that Pokemon in which he did get nerfed, right? But still, just like the facts I mentioned a second ago, he's still super viable, and he's going to take this spot. In this S rank, he has ridiculous secure in that bot lane for Dreadnoughts. He has a lot of safe, I, I guess how you would say, um, play styles. Because in a competitive situation, you're playing positioning, right? And a lot of people in these team stacks, they're, I mean, you got to assume they're generally pretty good, right? You got to assume that, like macro, micro skill. So when you're sitting here, you're playing Dorelodon, you're playing Cinderace, you're playing Greninja. You're playing all these ranged Pokemon that really, really depend on positioning, Dorelodon can perform extremely well when you go with the Pokemon. And just like Greninja, who will be A tier for me, who should be A tier for a lot of Pokemon, and somewhat S tier for a lot of other people, he does a lot, right? He brings up Cinderace playstyles. He brings up that, that long range positioning, whereas you can do the same thing with Dorelodon and Cinderace and another Pokemon we're going to talk about on this list here in a second, which is going to surprise a lot of other people. But Greninja also brings a lot of utility. It brings a smoke screen. It brings his double team. It's a lot harder for enemy teams who lock you down, especially as a good Greninja player. And in solo queue, he's an absolute monster. Meaning this Pokemon can just stomp a game in solo queue because he has so much potential to just carry the game. But at the same time, he 
has always been a solid Pokemon. He hasn't had a nerf in a long time. He hasn't had a buff in a long time. He's in a very, very good spot right now in the metagame. Just overall. We got Sylveon down here in the D tier. I know we're going to get hate for it, but it is what it is. Sylveon is just not competitive, competitively viable. You know, and now here, here's where I'm probably going to get stabbed at. Because we all know I'm not going to put Gengar in D tier. Because I'm a biased Gengar main. And I'm going to tell you why. But at the same time, for Sylveon players out there, this Pokemon got hotfixed was the quickest nerf in Pokemon Unite history so far, like, since patch notes. As soon as she came out, essentially, they nerfed her because Hyper Voice did way too much damage, right? And then, now she is what she is. But, in the same sense, I think they hit her a little bit way too hard. And we might see a buff here soon on Sylveon, and if we do, she definitely is going to be moved up, because she does have potential to carry games. But at the same time, in a 1-1-3 meta, if you put her in bot lane, she has easy, secure at bees because she has hyper voice right but at the same time she's taking a, a spot away from a dps on your team that can be more viable into the later games you know if that makes sense and then her unite ability is not necessarily offensive but more so defensive and i know you guys know what i mean when i'm, when I'm saying that it's more so like i'm not here to do a giant burst of damage not here to snipe off an enemy pokemon i'm here to jump up in the air and give my team buddy barrier and that's pretty much it you know what i mean so as a dps she needs that damage potential. She needs that damage to be a little bit higher than what it is to be more so viable for a lot of people to pick her over other Pokemon. But that's just my thoughts, if that makes sense to you. Let me know, you know what I mean? Trevenant, I want him to be super good. I, to me, I think he's going to be a D tier. Just because for a lot of people out there, there are some very, very good Trevenant players out there. And some of them are in my Discord. Some of them actually play Trevenant. Like, very, very good. Now, besides them, though, your average show player is not going to be super good with this Pokemon. Your average show player is also not going to run Trevenant in competitive qualifiers, championships. You're not going to see him that often, you know, if, if at all. And that's the differences. In solo queue, sure, you may see a Trevenant here or there, and they may do really, really good. But how far is that in between? You know what I mean? The Pokemon does very, very well at removing enemy Pokemon. So, for instance, he can move another Pokemon out of a team fight. He does that pretty well. But... In a solo queue world where that's a skill shot and that's kind of hard to do, let alone when you're playing in a, like I said, a solo queue environment as a tank. If you initiate this fight as a tank, you're like, okay, where's my team? Where's my team at? Okay, they're not, they're down over here farming at Dinos or they're fighting this core fish. They're not paying attention. So as Trevenant, you don't bring a lot of damage, but you bring that little bit of sustain that can allow you to survive in team fights. That's just about it. That's it. Dragonite, for me is going to be a B tier. Other than that, he is a very, very good pick when it comes to playing a score comp with, you know, like Krustle or, or Talonflame and stuff like that. But other than that, he doesn't do that much unless you're just playing with Hyper Beam. I know Outrage is the thing and people do like playing with Outrage, but Outrage just, it doesn't compete with Hyper Beam. And it is what it is. Hyper Beam did get nerfed. Or for those of you that don't know, it got nerfed by 4%. Okay, big whoop. 4% damage reduction, cool. Dragonite is still Dragonite, but at the same time, they also nerfed his auto attack damage. So there's that as well. But he's still able to secure objectives. He's still able to run with a score composition with Buddy Barrier, with his Unite move, with score shield. It still does very, very solid. And in solo queue, Dragonite is still very, very, very strong. And especially if your name of the game is just to go straight for objectives, Dragonite is also one of those Pokemon that can do that just well as securing kills with Hyper Beam. He does a very, very good job at that. A champ. I'm going to go ahead and place Machamp in the C tier. He's not a D tier Pokemon by any means in my eyes. I think he can be borderline up. He can move up a little bit, but just in, he has a lot of different, how you say, like team compositions in which he works with, which he doesn't work with. And then at the same time, he's also taking that spot from you on top side versus with Lucario, right? That's the only other spot you're going to see Machamp. He, you're not going to see him in the jungle because there's other junglers that do his job better in that situation. But in top lane, it's generally just going to be Lucario Machamp or just Lucario versus another off-meta Pokemon, for instance. And I think he brings a lot to the team if you're running Dynamic Punch over Submission. Because personally, and just like you should already know this, in a solo queue world, you know what you're going to do as a player, but you don't know what your teammates are going to do. So if you're sitting here playing Machamp, you're running Submission in solo queue. Here's the thing. You run in, right? Where are you going? Straight for the DPS. Cool. Like that's That's in your brain. That's what you're going to do. You get that DPS with submission. Your teammates are focusing the tank. 
your teammates aren't there. Your teammates are not paying attention to you. And that's the downside with the Pokemon that, that when you're running submission. But in that situation, if you're running submission in a competent team and a five stack or what have you, it can work out, but it doesn't do as well as dynamic punch because dynamic punch gives you that mobility, which submission gives you that movement speed. I get you, but it gives you this mobility to be unstoppable. It gives you this situation where you can stun targets. You know what I mean? Like an AOE stun, fantastic ability. Now, in the same sense, I think Machamp does bring a lot to the team in terms of his Unite move. Well, that's just, that's it. I think he takes a lot of wear all and skill to play this Pokemon. He's not necessarily super easy for a pickup and play because you got to realize how much damage he can take, how much he can deal. There's a lot of things that are ins and outs to this Pokemon. Well, that's just my thoughts and my opinions, you know? They, they could mean nothing to a lot of people, you know what I mean? Kremrit. Ah. <sighs> Back where he has been for a very long time in the D rank. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. We're not going to see Cramorant in competitive play. It's just not going to happen. We're not going to see him picked over another DPS in solo queue. The only people that actually play this Pokemon are people who actually enjoy the Pokemon just overall, like Cramorant. But right now, he's just not competitively viable. He did get nerfed again for no reason whatsoever. They nerfed his air slash and die for what I don't know. I'm sorry. All right. He's just not in a good spot. I know we all want him to be. He's just not there. Now, Hear me out. In a 113 meta, running Cramorant in a bot lane as a support Pokemon does work. Okay, if you teams out there, there's teams that do it. There's teams that are practicing it. There, it does work. Now, whether we'll see that ever in a competitive tournament, not 100%. It's a thing. It can be optional, but at the same time, you take another spot from a actual support on your team. So there's that. But that's the only other thing that Cramorant can be decent at right now, to be honest with you. Gorivor, she's going to be a B tier for me. She's not going to be an S rank. She's She can be teetering to A for, for a lot of people, but I think she's going to be a B rank just because she does require a lot of skill. She is not a pick up and play Pokemon, but at the same time, when you're playing Gardevoir on Nintendo Switch versus a mobile, like, you know, phone, you can do flick shots on a phone a lot easier than you can do flick shots on Nintendo Switch. Whereas with Psyshock on Nintendo Switch, the the camera, it pans out, you know what I'm saying? So you can see a lot more. Whereas if you're trying to hit somebody with Future Sight, it just snaps to the nearest target. So you literally have to drag. You have to drag it every single time. It's not like where the phone is, you know, you can you can snap, you can flick it. It's different. But at the same time, she still puts in work on Nintendo Switch. She still puts in work on phone. I think she just has a better overall mechanic on a phone versus a Switch. Now, she's, like I said, she still brings a lot to the team, especially when you're playing her in the jungle. And that's the only role you should be typically playing her in right now is jungle. Because once she starts snowballing, she's very, very hard to stop. Especially if you get ahead before that first Dreadnought fight and you have that Unite move, that's pretty much a guaranteed secure. Unless your team messes up. But still, she brings a lot to the team in terms of damage, crowd control, AoE. She has everything that you could possibly want. The best thing that they've done to her is actually change her level ups. And thank you guys for doing it because we needed Gardevoir to actually be viable for people actually wanting to play this Pokemon and do well. Instead of just going AFK when they get fall behind in experience because that's how it was back in the day. Now, we actually see her in competitive play. We see her in solo queue. We see her in five stacks. She's everywhere with good reason. Cinderace, though. Yes, S rank. Yes, A rank. Hard to pick. But... For a lot of people, we're all going to say Cinderace is going to be an S-rank Pokemon. And for good reason, he can be. And he can be A-tier for a lot of Pokemon. But at the same time, Cinderace brings the same thing he's brought to the team. Damage. Positioning. Mobility. Gap closes. He has everything. Blaze Kick. He has Flame Charge. He's got Faint. He has so many tools to keep this man alive. And at the same time, at catching other enemies. Out with Blaze Kick. He does a lot. He can secure objectives with his Unite move by stepping out of the bushes after this fight. Come on, we see it happen all the time in solo queue. And in competitive play, you play positioning well just with this Pokemon with the Rolodon. You got Blissey protecting you. You're golden. Like, your team doesn't need much else. Like, you keep these, these targets alive in your team compositions, 9 out of 10, and they're going to carry the game. I'm sorry for the car in the background, boys. I can't do anything about it. I, I'm sorry. But, like I said, if you're protecting these Pokemon and your team compositions with Blissey, Wigglytuff, or what have you, just... Tell your supports, stay on your ass. Because once you're protected, you're golden, right? That's it. You're good. And Cinderace can play that quite well. You got Decidueye here. Yes, you're right. He's not D tier no more. Yeah, he's moved up. He's not He's not C rank. He's not a B rank. He's an A tier. 
crazy, I know, right? But just like the tournament plays, just like the VODs, just like solo queue. Everything about this Pokemon, people talked a lot of smoke about. Like they just said he's not great. He's like very, very bad. He's never gonna be a good Pokemon until we saw tournament play with other teams running this Pokemon and doing well. And the thing is, considering Dureladon is in this metagame, Decidueye can compete very, very well. And at the same time, he got his buff to Spirit Shackle. He got, he got multiple buffs recently. The Pokemon is actually very, very solid. And I've said this before. He's a very, very good Pokemon, but at the same time, it's awareness, it's positioning when it comes to Decidueye. But in a competitive situation, whereas if you're running Decidueye into a Dureladon, you have a safe pick. You have a safe DPS on your team that can do damage. And considering Dureladon's in pretty much every single game, Decidueye is a lot safer versus some of these other Pokemon here. Some of these other Pokemon like Venusaur or Absol or Zeraora that you're going to see anyway. You know what I mean? It's He can stay out of range of Dureladon's abilities with Spirit Shackle and do damage and take out targets. He's very, very good at doing that. At the same time, he's very good at stealing objectives with his, with his abilities. Now, at the end of the day, he still has his universal problem. Being super squishy, being able to just blow up immediately, being the throwing bird, as a lot of people like to say. But overall, he brings that damage. He brings that, I guess how you can say, like utility to a team in which not a lot of other Pokemon do. And I think he's in a very, very solid position. You could argue he can be a B tier. You can argue he can be an S rank. But right now, hands down, very solid pick right now. Just you have to get better playing this Pokemon with positioning. Now, for everybody's bread and butter, Gengar. Where is Gengar rank? I don't even want to put him on a tier list because I'm going to get trashed for it anyway. But for me, we all know where I'm going to put Gengar. Gengar is S tier for me. Gengar is S tier for your mains out there. In solo queue, this Pokemon's an absolute monster in solo queue. Once you get rolling, once you get a couple kills in that early game, once you go down bot lane for that first bees or top lane for the first bees and you snowball, get both those kills and you still bees and score, boy, you're super fat. Like you are super fat at that point. Go back to your jungle rotation one more time and get down for that Dreadnought. You're hitting level 8. Close teetering to level 9. Sometimes you are level 9. You have that first Unite move. You're good to go. Gengar is so good in solo queue. Like he really is. You can perform super well with this Pokemon. You can perform super well with this Pokemon and team stacks. Either or. The differences between Gengar and your average Joe is skill. That's literally it. For instance... Gengar has one of the highest skill ceilings in this entire game. Hands down. Argue that if you want to. But no one's going to tell you that Gengar is a pick up and play Pokemon. You know what I mean? Whereas you can you can pick up and play Dureladon. You can pick up and play Cinderace. But you got to learn two different things. Positioning. You know what I'm saying? Gengar, you also have to know that as well. But at the same time, you got to keep in mind. You're a piece of paper at all times. You know what I'm saying? They can just go ahead and burn you up. Immediately jump into a team fight. But the difference is with Gengar... There's a lot of ins and outs. Y'all see my Gengar play. Y'all see my guides. You guys know I know how to play this Pokemon. There's a lot of other content creators out there. There's a lot of other solo queue mains who play Gengar who are very, very good with this Pokemon. And we want him to be competitively viable. We want to see him in tournament play. And I'm going to tell you now, I think the only way this Pokemon is going to see tournament light is if another team, whether it's United States, whether it's North, North America, whether it's you know EU or you know Southeast Asia, what have you, Somebody has to play Gengar. Somebody has to do well with it on the team. And I guarantee you, once that happens, we will see Gengar more so in stacks because it's going to open up a new light. Just like now, Sidueye. Everyone's been trashing this Pokemon since day one. We thought he's going to be super good. He was fun for the first week. And then we realized how bad the Pokemon actually was. And then he got buffed, for instance. But I think it's going to take something like that to see how good Gengar actually is. But hey, this is my thoughts and my opinions. I really enjoy the Pokemon. I'm super biased for him. You can't tell me nothing, you know what I mean? But in hindsight, in competitive play and a 5v5 stack, and you're sitting here playing your Discord, it all depends on you and your team. If your team thinks you can perform well with this Pokemon, keep trying. Keep having fun. Keep getting better. Now, in the solo queue world, Gengar will sit in S rank for me in solo queue when you're really good with this Pokemon. But just that, like I said, in a 5v5 stack and an actual competitive play, you got to have your team to say, hey, that's fine, you can play Gengar. You know what I mean? If you're not good with the Pokemon, don't try it, type thing. 
But hey, this has been Paul's Plays. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you join that Discord. Tell me I suck. Let me know your thoughts and your opinions on these Pokemon here. I know we can move things around. I like I like doing these tier lists just because I can hear everyone else's opinions. But hey, stay safe out there. I will catch you guys in the very next video. See you later.